Welcome to Learning Tech 101. My name is Renique, and today we're going to talk network devices. So the first one we got is the hub. So this is going to be the simplest of devices that are used on an Ethernet network for connecting devices together. Your hubs, they split the bandwidth of connection among all the computers connected to it. So whatever your max bandwidth speed for that hub, however how many devices that are connected to it, it's split between them. So the thing about your hubs is they do not perform any type of packet filtering or addressing functions, but instead broadcast data to all computers connected to it. So hubs are not going to forward just to specific devices. Anything that it receives is actually going to just regenerate and send to everybody that is connected to that hub. Next device we got is the switch. So it provides connectivity to devices in a local network. So this is going to be used to be able to create your local area network. Uh, creates a dedicated full speed connection between two computers that are communicating with each other. The switch makes use of the MAC address to deliver message to the right destination. So the one thing about the switch was the switch was designed to improve on the hub. So it'd be considered a smart hub or a smarter hub. So as we talked about with the hub, how the hub is actually regenerating whatever it receives and forwarding it to everybody that's connected. The switch now is able to utilize the MAC address of all the devices that are connected to it to know where everyone's connected at and then to forward data just to its intended destination based on their MAC address. Next, we got your router. So this interconnects two or more networks. Now, it operates at the border of your network. So this is going to be the last device before it gets outside of your network. Now, it's going to store information about the systems that are connected to it and where to send requests when the destination is unknown. So this is where all your routing decisions are going to occur. So it's gonna keep track of different networks that are out there and then be able to start making routing decisions based on that. And then if it doesn't know, then it knows who to send it to next to be able to help out with these routing decisions. Now, so your routers are gonna work on the network layer of the OSI model. Next, we got your wireless access point. So this is gonna be used to extend a wired network to wireless devices. It involves uh, the 802.11 group of standards that define wireless LANs, WLANs. The central connecting point for computers equipped with wireless network adapters. So all your wireless devices that need to connect to the network are going to connect to a wireless access point. Now, a wireless access point keeps track of everyone that's connecting to it by its MAC address. So you can say wireless access points actually operate at layer two of the OSI model. Now, wireless access points being that everything connects to it are going to be the example of a hub device in a, in a star topology. Now, our next device is going to be the patch panel. So this is going to be a box that's designed as a junction point for twisted pair and fiber cables. It's going to be your first step in organizing your cables in an office or a building. So your patch panels are going to be located in telecom closets or data centers and everything. And you're going to have all these cables coming from your different Ethernet jacks that are in the wall spread throughout the building or office that the cable that's in the back of it is going to run through the wall and eventually connect into that telecom closet or data center. And they're going to connect to the back of these patch panels. So what you're able to do is from these connections, now you're able to connect to whatever networking equipment that you're going to have in that area. So it's going to be a better way of organizing your connections rather than having all these different connection and cables coming from all these different devices and, and things like that running into the different equipment in there. And then it's really easy to start swapping out connections and devices and things like that rather than having to move around cables and, and, and all those type of things. Next, we have your firewall. So this is going to be a security hardware appliance or software application that protects a computer or network from unwanted intrusion. So it blocks unwanted connections from untrusted networks and can block basic network attacks. So your firewall is going to be on your border of your network. That's what it's mainly protecting, the border of your network. So anything trying to come into your network is going to make decisions on whether that should be allowed or not. Now, there are different types of firewalls out there, packet filtering, stateful inspection, application level, circuit level gateway, and all of them have different things that they're looking for to make these decisions. But they are trying to separate what is considered a trusted network and an untrusted and then make decisions on what should be allowed inside of the trusted network. The next device that we got is the modem. So this is going to be used to connect a LAN to an internet service provider. 
So it's going to convert digital signals into analog signals and vice versa. So the thing about your modem is whether you're using broadband internet or DSL, they are using analog cables to be able to communicate or connect you to your ISP. So the one thing that it has to do is be able to convert that analog signal once it's coming into your house or into your business into a digital signal because everything inside of your network, that's how it's working on a digital signal. So it's got to be able to convert that analog signal to a digital signal to be able to get to those devices within your network. And then also when things are getting sent out of your network, do it in the opposite. Now convert that digital signal to an analog signal. So now that it can go over those type of cables. Our next device is our network interface card. So this is going to be the interface on a computer or other devices that connect to the LAN. They're designed to take the communication off of the physical cable or wireless signal and present it to the computer for processing. Each NIC has a unique physical address known as the MAC address. So coming from the manufacturer, your MAC address is assigned to your NIC card. Even though, and your NIC card is going to operate at layer one. So even though it's operating at layer one, the MAC address itself, though, is operating at layer two. But every one is going to have a unique MAC address. So no one is going to be the same. And then based on some of the details of the MAC address, you can actually determine what the manufacturer of that NIC card is. Next, we got your bridge. This is going to be used to connect two or more networks. It's going to forward data to networks without analysis. Now, modems or, or bridges, I'm sorry, are not going to be used in modern networks nowadays. Now, there are some. So you may have wireless bridges and you may see these used like with um, in metropolitan area networks or even campus area networks where you have buildings that are in uh, vicinity of each other and you want to be able to connect them together, but yet don't want to run cable between the two. Then using a wireless bridge is a way of being able to connect them together. And then our last device is going to be a repeater. So it amplifies the signal that it receives so that it can travel a longer distance. Now, uh, most won't see a cable repeater, but you probably have seen or have used it yourself, a wireless repeater. So if you have a Wi-Fi extender that you're using to extend your wireless network into other areas of your house that are getting very poor coverage, that's going to be an example of a repeater because all it's doing is just regenerating that wireless signal so now that it can go further than what originally could have. Hopefully you found this helpful and I thank you for watching.